when it comes to protests in the area, things tonight are the calmest that they have been for several days. Now we still have multiple teams monitoring the situation. Larry Seward and Josh Bazan have been downtown since the start of protests at one o'clock. But first we go to reporter Kristen Swilly live in Westchester tonight where that newly announced curfew went into effect a little over an hour ago. Kristen. Yeah, good evening, guys. It has clearly taken effect out here at the Square at Union Center up until about 30, 45 minutes ago. We still had about somewhere between 50 and 75 people, but everyone's gone. And the Westchester police said this is exactly what he was looking forward to. He said he didn't really want to arrest anyone, and he was willing to even let people stay out here if they were doing so peacefully. We'll get into a little bit of what I mean by that in just a second, but let's go some video from just a little bit earlier today. I want you to hear and see the crowd that we had out here. Here. We stand together. We stand together. The chief was right here at the Square at Union Center when the news came down. We spoke to him about what enforcement will look like with a peaceful demonstration stretching into the night. He said the department wants to be tolerant and will treat violating the curfew a lot like speeding, meaning police are not going to stop every single person out past 10, but they will take outliers into custody if they feel like they have to. We also asked him specifically about the death of George Floyd and his thoughts on tonight's protest. I can say I was absolutely disgusted what I saw. Um, there was total disregard for a human life and the fact that the intervention did not happen by other officers on the scene was just incredible. I, it was sickening for me to sit and watch. This demonstration, protest, whatever you want to call it, is absolutely okay in Westchester. This is positive. This is how change happens. Open dialogue, discussion. There's some passion going on. There's some prayer going on. That's what change happens. It's not about black and white. It's about, you know, black people being tired of being treated how they're treated. And, and, and we're, we're standing. And that's what it's about. We want it to be peaceful out here. And as you saw, a Westchester police officer even taking a knee there for a moment to a round of applause from the crowd out here. Now the curfew could stretch for the next 30 days. Again, that's from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And that could change. It could be a little bit shorter if the uh, trustees give the administrator the go ahead to change that. But for now, reporting live in Westchester Township this evening, Kristen Swilly, WCPO 9 News. Kristen, thank you. Westchester was not the only suburban area that saw protests or demonstrations today. In Madeira, scores of people gathered at the municipal building in silent protests, calling for change. The group also knelt for eight minutes and 40 seconds. The same amount of time the video shows the now former Minneapolis police officer kneeling on George Floyd's neck. Well, after curfew, it was much different in Cincinnati than during the past few nights. Cincinnati's assistant police chief called it the most peaceful night of protesting so far, in fact. And reporter Larry Seward was with this crowd at the courthouse. He's live now with more. Larry? Greg, people went home at or a little after curfew peacefully. No dust ups with police, but we did see one man punched in the face. Take a look at this. Our camera was rolling when it happened. A guy with a thin blue line flag walked into protesters here on Main Street. In between them, actually, someone snatched his flag. You can see there, threw it down, then threw a punch that connected with the guy's face. A short time later, deputies inside the courthouse emerged in riot gear. They went back inside minutes later, and as the clock neared 8 o'clock tonight, which was curfew, we saw protest leaders pleading, literally pleading with the crowd to go home and all did eventually, but plan to be back tomorrow afternoon at one outside the courthouse because protesters, despite positive conversations with Cincinnati Assistant Police Chief Paul Newdigate, they want more. I could be just like anybody else that was killed. I could be killed any other day, so I feel like I'm just another piece of the puzzle. I have to show my face. We saw just one person handcuffed and taken away by Cincinnati police officers promised to give people time tonight to leave the courthouse after the curfew without facing arrest. And as much far as we can tell, other than the one arrest that we saw, that is exactly what happened. Assistant Chief Newdigate telling me tonight this is easily the most peaceful night of protesting since Friday. Craig, Tanya. Much different night indeed. All right, Larry Seward reporting tonight. Thank you, Larry, for keeping, of course, that situation monitored throughout the day. Well, Josh Bazan also covered protesters today. He's at City Hall where they spoke with police leadership about their message. Josh. 
Tanya, that moment happened when protesters came here to City Hall early, earlier this afternoon. They stopped traffic in the street for about an hour and a half. It was a peaceful demonstration, but they did shout chants toward the 70 or so Cincinnati police officers stationed at City Hall's front entrance. The march started at the Hamilton County Courthouse around 1 o'clock, moved through the city to Washington Park and City Hall before the organized portion ended around 430. But a group of those protesters marched back to the courthouse and continued peacefully demonstrating right up until the 8 p.m. Cincinnati curfew. This moment happened around 5 o'clock at City Hall. That's Assistant Police Chief Paul Newdigate having a conversation with the protesters. I spoke to those young women and they say they just want their message to be heard and want to see positive change when it comes to police use of force and the criminal justice system overall. We obviously feel how we feel. We're going to protest. We're going to be out here every single day until we get things done. Um, but we would actually like them to like not be so aggressive when we're trying to get our point across to them. They're bringing SWAT trucks in. I think once we have that conversation with him, we might see a change. Um, he's hoping for change. I believe him. I don't believe that he is trying to blow smoke. The violence directed towards the police, the damage, uh, the rioting, the looting that we had Friday, it, it makes it very hard for us to find that common ground. So what I was offering was an olive branch. Let's have a discussion. It's important to say that the vast majority of people I've seen these last five days at these protests have been nothing but peaceful. Police and city leaders have acknowledged it's a small group of people who have caused problems, usually after dark. CPD says the earlier curfews have helped address some of those issues. And as we've been mentioning tonight, seems to be the most peaceful night of these protests for George Floyd since they started in Cincinnati on Friday. The protesters I spoke to are hopeful they can take the energy from these demonstrations and turn it into actual change in Cincinnati. Reporting live tonight at City Hall, Josh Bazan, WCPO 9 News. Josh, thank you. So our crews have been in the field gathering information. They're talking to protesters, as you saw. They're talking to police and elected officials hearing your stories. WCPO 9 News will only break into programming if events, of course, warranted. And you can always find the latest information that we are discovering and reporting on over on WCPO.com. Download our mobile app as well for those critical push alerts.